Today we're going to examine IC chip layout design. What is the best practical approach? Must it be done manually or automatically? To see that, based on the previous video, we have created the stick diagram for an inverter where the resulting diagram has the devices with in length measurement. What we need only is based on the resulting most transistor interconnection, create this stick diagram. Recall, this side of the PMOS connected to BDD. This side is on the other side of polysilicon that is connected to the output line, and that is in cascade with the NMOS whose drain is connected to BSS. And then, basically, therefore, to draw a stick diagram and eventually translated to IC layout is to create an ideal complementary network. The pull-up network is the given function. So the complement of that is the pull-down network. The junction of them is the output line and the input is provided to both dependent on the function. That is the ideal approach. Today, let us first look at a manual design that need to be carried out to produce a simple exclusive gate. These four slides will show the varying degree of design efficiency if done manually. It's very possible that the initial approach is direct translation of the exclusive or function AB naught or BA naught into transistor level. So you will complement here the A and the B to produce A naught B and the A with the B naught and the, this is the B and A naught and all that with the A, B naught to produce exclusive. Converting this down to a transistor, we know for each of the inverter we need two transistor PMOS plus NMOS. And the end gate takes four transistor a piece and then you have to complement that, so that's another two transistor there. And the OR gate is four transistor, and you got to comp NOR gate, you got to complement that to produce the resulting OR. So all in all, counting this tr number of transistor, there is a total of 22 transistor in all. That is considered a poor design. Not only it takes a lot of transistor, but the propagation delay is also very long. An improved version of that is based on using all NAND gate implementation and then translate that down to a transistor. So you double complement the given exclusive or apply the innermost complement, it become this expression, this or become an N. So it takes one, two, three, two input NAND gate, and you only need to provide the inverted A or B. So counting the number of transistor, we got four here, four, four, and four here. So you got, you need a 16 transistor. So you save six transistor compared to the earlier method. A better method is like this. It takes two here, two here, Two here, that's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve transistor only. So that's even better. The best is to use the microwin cell library of the microwin. The implementation of the inverter is similar to the one we designed manually. Takes two. He need one inverter here, another inverter here, and we need also a so-called PMOS. Pass transistor, PASS, and an NMOS pass transistor. The hookup, this signal here can easily be proven satisfy this two table. Let us examine if it is zero, zero for AB. A zero here, turn this on, close this, and open this. A zero here, uh, this is closed, therefore the BDD appear here as a high Y. And this is, all. let's try the high, high. A high here and a high here. So a high here, close this switch and open that so the low here appear here. This is low, so this is on, so that low appear here, so that is zero also. But this is open, so the, the low here cannot go through because this is open. And this high here, 
process this which open that so this is this high is passing through appearing as a Y for zero one this zero here closes this switch open that and a high on the B closes this and open that so therefore this is closed B is high so this is closed this is open so this zero propagate here and passes through here appearing here as a zero and lastly for one zero likewise the zero will appear here so the complement of that produces an exclusible the most efficient implementation relying on the library cell of the microwave next we're going to compare or auto generate CMOS we will use this spice to compare the simulation and using the original manually designed and auto-generated CMOS. Let us open a mask that we have developed earlier that appear in this folder. Let us transfer that to a new folder by saving it as I'll put them in the so-called Y Auto Automate and maybe I should call it Y Mask. Our last demo, this is the manually design that we have simulated the work. And this is the shortcoming we made if you bring down the IC layout, you can generate the NMOS transistor, PMOS transistor automatically by clicking the generate button. Let us perform this SPICE netlist for both of these. But we need to provide an input and an output. <clears throat> First, let us connect the BDD and the BSS ground. Let us introduce an input so we got to complete our transistor comment earlier. So we got to provide that additional polysilicon outward so we can make some hook. So we can provide. And let us extend it some sort of input. How about we call that to be input B and the output is how about BN. Let us use the same clock to be the B and let us call it BL clock B CLK slower generate. Save this layout under the same name and let us generate the spice code of this Submicron CMOS point twelve. Click OK and open up the spice. Open up the generated circuit Y and record the node for B. Uh, we have uh, the clock of B is at node ten and the output B N is at uh, node 5. Clock of A is at node uh, 9. The output inverted is at node 3. Add some trace. Why don't we put the previous one, output of A, first so it will appear at the bottom. And that is node 3. Then add on top of that the trace 